Alrighty, so this is how you pop out a uh, the red service light. This here is just electrical tape that I tied around the connections so that I could close the door. Um, I've put down painter's tape around just so that I don't scratch the paint as I pry this out, but it really does pry out um, relatively easily. It's going to be really hard to do with one hand. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, yeah. Just very gently, oh jeez, look at that, I wasn't even recording. Very gently, that's all she wrote. Now it usually does have a connection that goes on the back there, but uh, I took it off and it's just going to be in there. So this is the side door jam, those little red security lights or uh, service lights, and these shine out into oncoming traffic to let them know that your door is open. This here was a little bit rusted, so I fixed the corrosion. Just scraped it off. I did end up ordering a secondary replacement part anyway, just because the one on the other door is rusted, so it rusted out completely. As you can kind of see over here, unsavable. Uh, cleaned out a little bit of the connections in there, and I'm gonna put in uh, some electrical grease on both sides of the connection and then put it back inside. With the battery disconnected, you're not going to short out the uh, short out the system. And if you do, I believe it's fuse 24 that needs to be changed. Um, I'll put a link in and confirm that below. Um, key thing to watch out for here is definitely um, putting a clip or some other method of making sure those wires don't fall back into the door because nothing would be worse than having to dismantle the door to get those wires out. Um, on the other door, I will be replacing these. Um, these ones look okay to me. I do have replacement parts, so once I get it changed, I'll, I'll see if it works, and if it does, great, and if it doesn't, then I'll replace these ones as well. This just connects in there. Oh yeah, and the other really important part here is on this car, you can see there the red wire, and then there's a brown wire, or brown-white wire. The red wire is the one that goes to the positive terminal which you can see there, that little plus sign right over there. Just make sure that you don't reverse them and that you do double check that if anything's going wrong with your car, just make sure that the uh, wiring is going to the correct terminal. So it just snaps back in and as you can see, uh, I've put some electrical or some uh, painter's tape just around the door jam so that I don't scratch it as I remove it. I literally just pried this off with uh, very delicately with a small um, auto kind of screwdriver there. I'm just gonna click this back in. As you can see, that's all there is to it. Very similar to pulling it out. So this is the connectors on the other side of the door. Um, huge kudos to uh, Renlist and uh, Alan there for suggesting that I get these. These are like veterinarian tools. I can't remember what they're called. Does it say on them? No, I'll post the link. They weren't expensive. They were like 13 bucks and they lock at the bottom so they can uh, crimp down the wires without damaging them. And uh, I just used it to pull this sheathing here up and over on the back there. You can kind of see in there, there's this rubber hose which I think is the, uh, let me just see here, the heat shrink. So I think that's the heat shrink. And this thing is kind of supposed to go over it. So I had no space for the wiring and the, this, this housing right here was right at the tip of the wires over here. And then uh, using this tool here, I was able to pull this back over the heat shrink, exposing the wires, which is awesome. And uh, it does look like this is a 16 gauge wire. Uh, kind of just eyeballed it using my trusty tool and that is about it you can kind of see right there 16 gauge kind of looks about just about where we're supposed to be maybe maybe 14 but those are 16 14 connectors so they'll be fine Alrighty, so this is kind of the best i can do showing you uh in a stable way what's going on here so we're going to be replacing these connections here um like i said battery's been connected uh Never done it before, so I'm a noob, and that's why this channel is called uh, Noob Porsche or 928 Noob Sauce. Um, 
First thing I'm gonna do is just cut off the plastic bit or the rubber bit that's around the wire, being very, very careful not to cut the wire itself. I'm using an X-Acto knife with the blade away from the wire. And I've just nicked it enough that I can hopefully just pull it apart. This is an 89 Porsche 928, so likely going to be pretty easy. And actually there's some play in there too, which is kind of nice. So that's not too bad. Connection itself does look rusted and the ends of the wires do look rusted as well. Um, I think what I'll do, I've got a decent amount of play in that wire, but if I cut it off right there, right at the end of the metal, then I have to cut back a bit. I am shortening it a, I'm shortening it a fair bit. So I think I'm, what I'm gonna try to do is just pull open the metal connector, the uh, female connector here, and then cut the tip of the wire off. I'm using a wire cutter tool just to pry it open. no way because even if that comes off it's probably super tight around the wire itself so I'm thinking we will have to cut the wire on the back of the connector now that is off say nope so let's cut that off nice and clean right at the end and what I should be doing is actually protecting my wire from falling in so I believe that this is a 14 gauge either 14 or 16, I think it's 14, and it's not 16. Beauty. And one of the things I don't know if you do is put, uh, dielectric grease on the wire itself. Just going to turn the wires a little bit just to make them nice and tight. Very gently feed it through right over here. That one fits Nice and good. Forgot to open up my kit here. That's what being noob sauce is all about. You know, you've got your tools spread out all over your garage and you never have the tool that you need in front of you. Feel free to comment below on how you guys manage your tools. Do you bring like a toolbox with you or this set here, Princess Auto, 10 bucks. The whole thing, it's a whole crimping set. I wasn't sure if uh, I would have the actual connector that I needed, so I, uh, I bought them anyway. Pretty cheap, only like five bucks or whatever, so pretty good. So what they said is on this, you'll see you've got the uh, yellow, blue, and red, and then I've got a blue. So that's what you use to crimp. You just put it in between. They said that it shouldn't break, but uh, maybe could. I'm just gonna be slow and careful, popping it in, crimping it up. 
face the tool towards myself so I can make sure that we're on the blue. So what happened there is uh, as I crimped it, the wire uh, slipped back. So thankfully I've got 600 of them. And this time I'm gonna maybe put my hand Maybe actually give it a little bit of extra over top. Looks pretty good. Hmm. I don't like it. it. Looks like it's really loose. As you can kind of, I don't know if you can see there. That doesn't show too well, but anyways, it's a very tiny hole. I'm gonna crimp it, just looking at it to see how tiny I can get this to be. Whether or not I can crimp this around the wire itself. Which looks like I can, but that's not what's going to be. Alrighty, so on to number three. Um, I checked a little hole in the back there and I just crimped it and looked at it as, it I, as I did it. I'll see if I can show you on this one here. Um, yeah, so this one there, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of space left. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera, but... When I crimp it down, if I do it properly, I thought this was going to snap the plastic if I did it, but really, you can actually crimp that right down. It doesn't even break the plastic, and it does it does crimp it like completely close. So I'm going to put some a lot more pressure on it, and that should get me to where I need to be. And you know what? I think I'm even going to level up my play here, and uh, I'm going to put it on the tool first then put it through the wire and then kind of see how we make out. I think that does it. So that did it. Alrighty, so I've been able to remove the uh, end pieces, the uh, female connectors, just like uh, I did on the other one. I did discover from doing it using this tool here that actually the positive red wire on the Porsche 928 seems to be an 18 gauge, not a 16. So these are 16, 14, I believe, uh, 16, 14. When I asked them at Princess Auto, you know, how do I fit two wires in here? Do I need to be worried? What they said was, no, what you should do is maybe take up a size. So if the wire was an 18, as an example, go with the 16, and then you've got to put both wires through the hole in there. So I'm going to try that and see. And I have confirmed that the um, old connections, the old female connection on the positive wire did have both wires running in together, um, touching. So they were not separated in the female connector originally. Oh, see, Noob Sauce almost forgot to put his crimper, his connection in his crimper first.
done. Bonus. Where is that? It's going to uh, switch the angle of the camera to get a better shot here. Alrighty. So as you can see, both wires are crimped in there. Those are both there, which is perfect. And I'm noticing now on the female connector there, it does say 1614. So I'm going to check my other one just to make sure that it is 1614. And if it's not, then I'll switch it. Alrighty, so I've got the connections changed. I was going to put the heat shrink on and then use a hair dryer to test that out. Um, if that doesn't work, then I'll use the lighter method. But I decided that I'm going to put some uh, dielectric grease on the connectors here just where the wire goes in so I'm just going to use a paper clip to kind of put push it down in there because it does say to put on a thin layer so I don't want to over grease it and then it does say that you can put uh, a thin layer again on the connection tips so when I do put the housing back in with the light bulb that's the housing that goes in here um, it kind of sticks in there like that and then it'll have the uh, male connector blades that stick out and then those blades go in here um, I can put dielectric grease on that as well. So I'm going to do that and uh, feel free to comment. Let me know if I should immediately not do that because I'm going to blow up my car and then I will uh, run home, freak out and uh, take this out right away. Ooh, dielect dielectric grease. So it does say, like I said, clean or a uh, thin layer. So I really don't need much. I've got about, I can't really even see it, just enough. And then kind of looking at it, I'm thinking, you know what? This is such a thin layer, I ain't gonna do jack. Well, that's all good. Um, yeah, yeah. I have to kind of fill up that boot with, fill up that little hole with dielectric grease, dielectric grease in order to really do anything. So, fail. But I will put on a little slab right at the end there, where the connection meets the metal. push some of it down into the housing there probably not doing a goddamn thing that's all right you live and you learn this wire wanting to go back into the housing so remember make sure that you have some mechanism to prevent these wires from falling back into your door because nothing is going to ruin your day more than having to go and fish these puppies out take your time go slow sure that you do not let go of that wire. Checking. Seems to be good. Alrighty. So I am going to cap one of them off just because. And then this is going to be the part where I put on the connector, the uh, heat shrink rather. So I've cut it kind of to size of what I want to put on. Um, I'm actually going to put my my uh, metal tool here on the wire itself that I'm going to be manipulating. Maybe even over, yeah, put over the rubber part. Even better. So all that's going to go on here is I'm going to slip the 
feet shrink over. And I'm realizing that I used the wrong size. Maybe I'll put on a touch more dielectric grease. Just, you know, why not? Beauty. Now I'm going to slide my heat shrink on. Gentleman at uh, Princess Auto said he puts them right over to the end there. So that's kind of what I'm going to do as well. Keep it protected and uh, hopefully it does the trick. I do have on this snazzy little kit here, these plastic pieces. I could always pop one of those over and then kind of see how I feel. Who knows? And I figure water could probably get down into there, hey? Why don't I like double down on the whole thing and try to put this on? Then I'm gonna put this on over it. How about that? Now see what would have had to happen is I would have had to probably put this piece on first and then pull it forward because I don't think I'm gonna be able to stretch out that piece there. I can't imagine it being watertight in these. So now you hook up your air dryer. Mother of God. So it's said online that you put them on to be as hot as possible. So I'm assuming that uh, when I put this on, you're not gonna be able to hear Jack. So it's looking pretty good. You can kind of see. I'll put this on a different way so you can get a better angle. So you can kind of see it's tight up against it all around. The only place that it's really not is right at the back there. You can kind of see that there's a little space. Um, I think I'm going to grab the lighter and I'll just briefly go over it just to see if I can kind of close that down. But again, I'm thinking that like even if I did. Um, it's not going to be airtight or watertight, so um, probably limited functionality there, but uh, 
we'll see. And I'm not going to burn it out with the with the lighter either. I'm going to be very careful. Alrighty, so the space that I was talking about is right on the outside edge over here. Um, speaking to some of the peeps on Renlist, the idea, I've seen some people use the flame to actually lick the rubber with the flame, but uh, some, some people suggested actually um, just using it, the heat from the side of the lighter. So putting the flame to the side of the rubber and just allowing that, that the proximity and that heat to heat it up. So I'm gonna try that first to see if it shrinks it down a little bit more. So it doesn't really look like it's shrank all that much and it is hot to the touch. So I am satisfied with the way that it is. I'm not gonna do any more than that. Time to do the other one. Being very careful with my wires. Measure it up by just placing the sleeve over. And I'm just going to make a little indentation at the very end where the, f the male or the female clip is so I know where to cut. And then I'll add my favorite product here, some more dielectric grease. And then uh, good old hair dryer method.
that's looking pretty good. Going to put my, I'm gonna hold this actually. Oh shoot, that is pretty hot actually. So that's really hot. So the, the hair dryer definitely works. Actually just gonna let that cool for a bit. Just feel up on those wires. And these scissors are a little bit, um, they're not really scissors, but they definitely, they don't damage the wire, but you know, I don't know. They leave a mark on it, so we'll see. What I do like is like, this is used to like pull, you know, like if they're doing surgery and they like pull arteries and stuff open, this is kind of what that's for. So it's great to gently pull on the leather or the rubber here without Let's see if you can see that here. So I won't be able to complete this with just one hand, but as you can see, this allows me to pull, really get this out and over. So I'm gonna pull it over those two connections and then I'll uh, put it back. I'll uh, show you the final result. Alrighty, so I used the tool there just to pull this over a bit and it's overlapping. I think that the heat shrink is kind of maybe a centimeter in. And then I think I'm going to use some electrical tape just to uh, go around that once or twice. I still need to, these still need to be able to open up to fit on either side of the housing, but uh, that should be fine. Alrighty, so that's done. You can kind of see the electrical tape is all over here, and uh, I've still got some space. And if I don't, I can always cut back that tape a little bit to uh, expand out the connection there. And then last but not least, I uh, won't do it on camera. But why I really like this tool is this little housing here. It's like this rubber tube that fits over everything. It's like, a, it's big. And uh, it's not easy to get at. And there you go, you can kind of see it. But this tool will help me pull that housing down to cover off these wires and I guess protect them that much more. What I just realized that I've gone through, done this amazing job of crimping everything, doing this whole fantastic thing. I don't know which freaking wire is the positive wire now. The red wire is the positive wire, and now that I've covered them all up completely, I have no friggin' idea which one is the positive red. So, lesson learned. Uh, next time, mark that down with like a pen or something like that so that you don't have to undo all your damn work and uh, figure that out. Alrighty, luckily all I had to do was uh, unwrap my electrical tape there just to uh, see which one's the red wire and it's that one there. So I'm just going to mark that off with a piece of tape and then uh, I know when I go to connect everything back.